Hello and welcome to Excel-DashboardTemplates.com. This is Steve Equals True. Please visit my blog at Excel-DashboardTemplates.com so you're sure to get the latest charting techniques, tips, and tricks to learn everything about Excel dashboards. Also, don't forget to sign up for my video channel so you're sure to get the latest posts delivered directly to your inbox. All right, uh, today I'm going to show you a really cool technique I thought of. And uh, recently I showed you how to use a pick list. You can see a little pick list right here uh, to change your data set. So I had net expenses, revenue, and uh, uh, net earnings, and the chart, the column chart would change based on the pick list. I got to thinking and I said, well, how about we use this to change the chart type that you're actually showing? So you can see I've got some data here, January through December, just some static fixed data. And uh, what if I don't want to see that as a column chart? Could I come up here to a pick list and see it as a line chart? Or could I change that pick list? get an area chart for the same data, or even an XY so we can see some little data points here. You can see those little stars. Um, so I uh, thought uh, that would be a really cool technique to show you so that you can learn these techniques for your own Excel dashboard. All right, let's go ahead and show you how we did this. Uh, first off, uh, there is a blog post that shows you exactly how to create pick lists. Uh, we're going to run through some of this rather quickly here, so make sure you check out my video channel or uh, the blog, so that you, uh, which also has the videos embedded, so you can learn every technique just in case you miss something. But uh, what we want to do is pick a cell. I want to go up to the data ribbon. From the data ribbon, we want to choose data validation. And uh, when the data validation comes up, I want to change it from any value to a list. And in my source, I actually want to come in here. I've already got this laid out here, like this line, column, area, and XY. Click on OK. I've got uh, a pick list created where it has line, column, area. Let's go ahead and start with the line chart. And I've already got my data laid out just like you might do for a standard chart. And then I've got these different columns over here, a line, column, area, and x, y. And I want to create a formula in here uh, that uses the not applicable or NA function uh, to show which data I want to choose based on the pick list value up above. So let's go ahead and write that formula. And we're going to create it once and then copy it over and copy it down. And it should work like a charm. So let's start out with it. You do equals. And we want to do just a standard if statement. I'm going to tab to go into my logical test. And I'm going to say if this value right here. And I want to lock this down because I'm going to copy it over. Um, so I'm not going to change the columns, but I do want to lock down. Uh, the value of the, I want to put a dollar sign in front of three. I have a blog post on relative and absolute references, but I'm just going to hit my F4 key here, and you can see it toggles through until I get if C dollar sign three equals, and we want to do B1, and B1 is not going to move if we copy this formula, so I hit F4 and lock that down to an absolute reference. If that equals with the line in C. 3 equals B1, do a comma, uh, then we want to actually put this value in right here, and that's B4. Uh, since I'm going to be copying this across, I need the column of B to stay static, so I'm going to hit F4 until I get a dollar sign in front of the B. Hit my comma, and if it does not equal um, line chart, uh, then I just want to do the NA function, and you can see that here. It says returns the value error of pound NA, value not available. Now there's no uh, actual thing other than two parentheses that you really need to do for the NA function. And then we can just end our parentheses. Let's go ahead and hit enter there and you can see since uh, this is a line and up here is line as well, uh, it will show 181 which is in what's column B. I change it to column. You'll see there it changes it to pound and A. So let's go ahead and, go ahead and uh, we've got our formula now. We can copy that down. So all of our values are going to show up there for the line because it is a line chart in our data validation. And then if I copy it over, all of these should be pound and A. Let's go ahead and change our value and see what happens. Let's look at column. Look at that line goes to pound and A, and column now has all of the data. Likewise with area and likewise with the XY chart. So uh, now we've got our data all set up and ready to go. We just need to create our chart. So let's highlight this entire range. And notice I've got the data in there as well. 
I'm just going to get rid of that series when we create our chart, but uh, to do that you want to go up to your insert ribbon. From your insert ribbon we can create any one of the charts that we really want of the floor. Uh, we've got a column chart here, and a column chart. Um, actually, let's do. Let's start out with the line since we have the line chart as our first one. I'm just going to pick a standard line chart. Okay, so let's um, let's go in here and take a look at this now. We have got uh, our line chart here set up. You can see we've got a data series in here that we don't really want as well. Um, so what I want to do is I want to make sure we've got everything set up right. So. You can see this, and once I select it, is the XY chart. Well, every chart in every line in here, there's five lines from data to XY. They're all, all line charts. What we want to do is we want to change these to the different chart types that they're going to ultimately be. Uh, so um, there is a, uh, another blog post out there that I have uh, that says what to do when, you, uh, let's say I want to select a column and change this one to column. I can't select it. They're all on top of each other. Lots of ways to do it, I show you in that blog post, but I'm just going to click in the chart here and then toggle my up arrow or down arrow until I ultimately get it. You can see over here we are now highlighting the data line. I'm going to hit my delete key because I want to get rid of the data line. And uh, I'm going to select the chart again and, and just toggle through these. So there's the line chart. We already have a line, so we're good there. Um, column chart you can see over on the left hand side I've now selected the column chart by moving my up arrows around uh, now I can go up to my design ribbon and then in my type group there is a change chart type button it will bring up this dialog box I want to change this to a column chart there it is right there I click on OK you can now see the column is in my legend over here Let's go ahead and select the chart and toggle through just hit my up arrows here until I find the series I'm looking for. Looking at my data on the left, there's the column chart selected, there's the area. Uh, I'm just going to go back to my change chart type button. I'm going to find the area chart type that I want and click on OK. You can now see area that has a kind of a block of purple there, so it's all set up and ready to go. And uh, finally, I need to select my XY series. I go up to my change chart type. I'm going to pick XY, and I'm just going to pick the ones with markers because the rest are kind of look like lines anyway. So I'm just going to use this one for the markers only. Alternately, I could use the line chart that's already there and just remove the line um, and add markers uh, in the series options. Okay. Now you'll notice when you change it to an XY, it's automatically putting this all of these data points on the second axis because you can see there's a second axis at top second axis to the right. I'm just going to click on all of these data points that represent the XY chart. I'm going to hit control 1 and bring up my format data series. And what I want to do is I actually want to use a different marker. I don't like that star. We're going to choose a built-in marker and we're going to choose, oh let's do the diamond. Diamond kind of pops in there, kind of nice. Uh, and also I want to move this off the secondary axis. There's no reason it really needs to be there. Uh, I could delete the uh, two axes, the horizontal and vertical for the secondary, or I can just move it right to the primary axis. Okay, uh, one last thing we need to do, I just like to get rid of this legend over here because it doesn't make sense for our graph. I selected it and hit my delete key. So you can see right now, let's go over to our cell B1 here, center that, make it look a little better. Uh, we've got an XY chart chosen and that's what's showing up in our chart. If I choose a line chart, that same data gets regraphed as a line chart, area chart, column chart, um, XY of course. My favorite might be the area. Uh, it looks kind of nice. So you can see how you can use uh, the not applicable or NA function and a pick list to create dynamic Excel charts that your users can interface with and create the chart type that they'd like. Uh, one caveat on there, you probably can't add every single type of chart in here because they're not. Uh, this is a combo chart with four different types in there. Uh, you can't put a donut or a pie chart with these ones just because they don't play nice together. Uh, same thing with 3D and 2D, just uh, you'd have to create different ones and we'll show you another technique to create those dynamic charts in the future. Alright, uh, so once again, this is Steve Equals True. Please visit my blog at ExcelDashboardTemplates.com and also subscribe to my video channel so that you're sure to get the latest charting techniques delivered directly to your inbox to make your Excel dashboards awesome.
Thank you.